Hello again. Um, this is another video on the Lawton amplifier application. This time I'm going to attempt measuring uh, lower resistance that I created using uh, 400 uh, milliohm resistors in parallel, which um, results in approximately 25 milliohms. Of course, uh, there is some extra parasitic uh, leads in the resistance, which uh, will probably throw off the value a little bit. But uh, it should be fairly close. I've used fairly heavy wires. But the point is to be able to measure uh, the sub-ohm uh, kind of uh, resistances, even down to tens or tens of million, maybe uh, hundreds of millions very easily. Anyway, so the setup is very simple. Uh, we have a lock-in amplifier. Uh, any audio type lock-in amplifier will work. And uh, right now I'm going to use the Stanford Research 530 for this one. And you need a signal generator which can provide a signal as well as a reference clock. In this case I'm using HP3325A. I'm going to be applying a 500 millivolt RMS signal uh, which will be at around 200 hertz for this particular case. I want to stay away from 60 hertz, 120 hertz because of uh, power line uh, radiation around the room from various equipment and you don't want to use any filters if possible to avoid uh, gain errors and stuff like that if they are very close to the uh, band pass or re band reject frequencies for 60 Hz and 120 Hz. So I'm using 200 Hz which is fairly uh, far away from the 120 Hz or even 60 Hz for that matter. And uh, basically we have a uh, one resistor which we need to measure uh, reasonably accurately. It doesn't have to be uh, ex exceptionally accurate, but uh, it's much easier to measure this resistance, of course, uh, being a reasonably large value. In this case, I used a 1K resistor and I found, uh, I did a 4-wire measurement on that and I got uh, 997.6 ohms for that. That is in series with your unknown resistor, which is here, which is then grounded. Um, the main thing is to make sure your grounds are noise-free, uh, don't have any loops. And in fact, if possible, uh, it would be good if the lock-in can actually isolate the ground and provide a 1K to chassis ground and use the return path from actually the bottom part of the resistor into the um, outer shield of the BNC connector, which usually comes in a, these type of instruments. Anyway, uh, I was able to make this work to some extent, so I will show the results once I uh, get to that. So basically you are going to supply AC voltage, um, 500 millivolts, that gets um, most of the voltage drop occurs on the R1 resistor being you know, much much larger than this one. If this is in the milliohm region, this is going to be in the micro volts over here. And so uh, that voltage is then uh, amplified in the lock and amplifier as a voltage input and it produces a VR voltage which is your op voltage, uh, the magnitude that is. You're not worried too much about the phase because you're, you're operating at very low frequencies. The phase is not going to change very much and um, it probably will remain very resistive. You won't have to worry about compensating for the phase angle. So uh, the basic calculation is also very, very simple. You have VR, which is the uh, voltage divider over here. VR is this way. This is the voltage measured uh, by the lock-in amplifier, which is the same voltage uh, here and that is equal to V in, which is the actual voltage over here. So it's good to measure that uh, separately you know, by first connecting this node to this node over here, and getting that value correctly. And then uh, basically V in times R unknown over R unknown plus R1 is equal to times V in equal to VR. If you rewrite that, you get V in minus VR times R unknown equal to VR times R1. And therefore R unknown is equal to VR times R1 upon Vn, Vn minus Vr. If uh, Vr is much smaller than Vn, which is uh, true because in this case we have micro volts and we have a very very large AC signal of 0.5 volts, it's uh, uh, in a several uh, three four orders of magnitude less, you can basically ignore Vr and on the denominator here and you get R unknown equal to Vr over Vn times R1. 
The only uh, difficult measurement is VR because it's affected by noise and other um, ground loops, um, voltage drops in the ground itself, things like that. Uh, whereas R1 and VN are much larger values and easy to measure. So we'll uh, next uh, look at the results from the locking amplifier and I'll compare with other measurements I did for the same resistor using other techniques. So here we have the setup for the resistor which is uh, four of these um, SM, uh, SMD resistors which are 100 milliohms each. They are connected uh, in parallel as I showed on the board there are basically four of them with the middle ones uh, as one output and uh, two outer sides connected together using solid wire and one of that one of those outputs is then uh, is going to a 1k resistor which I will connect the input source over here and then I will uh, ground this side and measure the voltage at this point uh, I have actually two um, uh, connectors actually um, wires which I soldered on right at the junction of these uh, resistors so I can pick it up right at the without too much of a voltage drop uh, in the leads themselves so I'll connect this up and then um, do the initial calibration for the VN and uh, I assume that uh, my other, other measurement for R1 is correct uh, 997.6 ohms and we'll do the measurement uh, of VR uh, in this configuration so right now I've connected the input of the lock-in to the uh, source as it is driving the this uh, resistive load because it's a uh, fairly low impedance uh, 1k it could cause some slight voltage drop in the source itself so I want to measure that carefully although this um, particular HP can drive 50 ohms I just want to make sure I get the right voltage so that voltage as you can see now on the lock-in is um, is 490.6 millivolts RMS and the phase I've adjusted to 0 degrees over here uh, I have to put an offset of 11 degrees so that looks good next I will uh, go and uh, look at the actual VR uh, by probing the resistor uh, midpoint and see uh, what we get so moving that to the as close as possible to the soldered connector so now we have the voltage being sensed at the resistor midpoint um, now we will have to reduce the increase the sensitivity So here are the calculations for the lock-in amp resistance calculation. Uh, VR was 14.2 microvolts approximately, VN was 490.6 millivolts, R1 997.6 ohms, therefore R1 from our calculation formula earlier uh, came out to be 28.9 milliohms. So we'll compare this with a uh, couple of other measurements uh, we do later on. So here's the measurement using my uh, homemade uh, milliometer connected to the same two points uh, this time I could get in a very nice connection because of those two uh, leads that soldered onto the resistor and uh, the measurement as you can see is a um, little bit um, different from what I got from the lock-in amplifier so it's about 26.9 or 27 milliohms which seems to be uh, fairly good uh, considering that um, 100 divided by 4 would be 25 plus some lead resistances 1 or 2 milliohms uh, could account for that so I'm quite satisfied with the measurement uh, both with the lock-in considering that it's not designed to actually do that kind of measurement with the basically with the ground connection which I think is suspect to some extent at these levels so this is now the four wire measurement using the HP 34401A it's basically connected um, 
the same way except now that I'm uh, using four separate probes to uh, get close to the measurement point on the resistor and the output um, result looks slightly underestimated I think it's uh, reading almost exactly 25 milliohms 24.9 and given that there's going to be some additional resistances in the parasitic um, series resistance in the lead at least one milliohm or two seems a little bit low and I trust my milliohm meter more in this particular measurement um, perhaps my 34401A is out of calibration or I don't know some other source of error but in any case we are fairly close in the last two measurements um. so to summarize um, a lock-in amplifier was used to measure a low valued resistor in this example a uh, resistor in the range of uh, 25 to 30 milliohms the lock-in amplifier result came out to be 28.9 milliohms the DIY meter which I had built gave me a value of 26.9 milliohms and the HP 34401A 4 wire measurement gave me 25 milliohms. I think both the lock in and the DIY meter are pretty good um, considering that uh, the resistors I had were 25 ohm plus minus 1%, uh, 20 sorry, 100 milliohms plus minus 1% for each of the resistors, and that if you average them out, it should be close to 25 milliohms, and so. With the extra parasitics thrown in, I would have expected uh, one or two more milliohms than uh, what uh, HP gave me. In any case, uh, these are good results. Um, the setup is simple. Uh, however, tricky to get um, accurate results with um, most conventional lock-ins, which don't have a floating ground at the input. Uh, if it's if you can do that, uh, or you can do a differential measurement, perhaps. Uh, you could get even better accuracy, uh, especially if you go down to 10 milliohms or lower. Um, this is a small signal measurement, so virtually there are no heating effects. The advantage which uh, lock-in measurement is that uh, you can do frequency dependent measurements at various frequencies from very very low frequency all the way up to the high audio frequencies. At higher frequencies, of course, the parasitic capacitances, lead inductances will cause the phase shifts, which will need to be taken into account in your uh, uh, actual calculations. Hope this uh, video was informative. Any comments uh, will be appreciated. Um, look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.